there are three million American children who are living today, not just in official poverty, which the United States defines as uh, uh, living in a household where the, the, the average uh, per person per day income is $16, not just in deep poverty, which the United States defines as living in a household where the average per person per day income is $8.50, but three million children living in what the United Nations defines as poverty in the developing world, which is $2 a day. Three million children living in households with that level of income and all that that entails. In 2010, a noted sociologist, Catherine Eden, uh, who's a professor at, uh, at Johns Hopkins of, of sociology and public health, started in her field research finding families that fit this description. And not a few families, a lot of families. Uh, and so she did what a good academic does and what good journalists do too. She wanted someone to, to check the data. And uh, since she was at Harvard right then and uh, Luke Schaefer was at Harvard right then instead of where he normally is, which is a professor of the University of Michigan School of Social Work. And after extensive research, Luke Schaefer said, well, yeah, it appears that there are uh, three million children living in such households. It also appears that this number is up by about 70% from what it was before uh, the end of welfare as we know it ended uh, in, uh, in 1996. And so what they did is they went to a number of cities and rural communities, Chicago, Cleveland, uh, the uh, Appalachian part of Tennessee, the Mississippi Delta, uh, to find those families and to tell those stories. They found eight such families and what their book, uh, $2 a day, uh, is, uh, is an account of both the larger social context, but also an account of these very different eight families uh, doing the kind of things and suffering the kind of things that you could only imagine and things you couldn't imagine that that kind of uh, life entails. As, as they make clear, uh, uh, they do not advocate for the re return of conventional old-style welfare, but at the time when uh, the era of big government was over, when welfare was essentially scrapped or made so obscure that people who would be eligible for it don't know, don't know what's out there, don't apply, uh, the era of outrageous economic disparities then began. We are well into it today. The book provides uh, a kind of useful guide of solutions. Some of them are solutions for problems that beyond those that simply affl afflict the very poor, higher minimum wages, more affordable housing, uh, but also some programs that would really uh, provide the kind of uh, transitional aid, uh, and in some cases non-transitional aid, uh, that a lot of these people need. Uh, the book is a worthy successor, really, to some previous winners, uh, to The Other America, to books like Nickel and Dime, to William Julius Wilson's The Truly Disadvantaged. And so the 2016 Hillman Award for Best Book uh, goes to uh, Catherine Eden and Luke Schaefer. So this uh, partnership started uh, between us in an early morning meeting in Kathy's office in Cambridge. Uh, and at the time, all I knew about Kathy was that she was a fellow Midwesterner and, uh, and a longtime ethnographer of American poverty, which means she does something a little uncommon in the academy, which is to go out and talk to people uh, when she wants answers. And I could tell uh, why she was good at her job because I immediately wanted to spill my life story. Um, so after 20 years of, of doing this kind of work, she said she was seeing these families, uh, she was seeing something she just had never seen before. Families who weren't just poor by American uh, standards but were deeply, uh, deeply poor. And in particular, uh, they might have access to food stamps, now called SNAP, uh, but they had no cash. And so we wondered, uh, had something changed? Was there a, an increase in these families and the number of these families? And, and if so, uh, did cash really matter if they had access to programs like, like SNAP? Um, were they okay? So I've been doing this kind of work for a long time, but I must say uh, that doing the ethnographic work for this uh, for $2 a day really shook me. 
uh, to the core as a, as a human being. Uh, but the numbers uh, that Luke began to produce uh, were, uh, were uh, really astonishing as well. Three million children up from only about uh, 600,000 uh, just families uh, just 20 years before, uh, an increase of 130%. If you follow kids uh, over the course of a year, you see 3.3 million of them living in at least three months of $2 a day po poverty. And the biggest growth in the $2 a day poor is among kids spending at least seven months in this condition. Uh, after uh, Luke went on to document this in data set, uh, this guy is tireless, right? Data set after data set, food stamps, uh, homeless children, food banks, more and more evidence that things had, had really transformed uh, at the bottom. Something had really changed fundamentally in the years since welfare reform. Uh, we then documented the absolute co collapse of TANF. Uh, what we see is that uh, from uh, about 14 million people in, in um, 1994, when the program was at its height, uh, we are now down to just a million adults and their dependent children, half of them just in two states, uh, California and New York. Uh, TANF has become uh, rarer than uh, collecting postage stamps. And what the states have done with the $16.5 billion the federal government continues to set, set, uh, send in the form of a block grant to states is uh, they've taken it out of the hands of poor people and they're using it uh, to fill state budget holes and pay for things like college scholarships, leaving only about $5 billion for direct aid. So after looking at the data, we thought uh, we had a lot of unanswered questions about what it was like to live in these circumstances, how do people find themselves there, and so that's when we went out uh, in search of families to see uh, the proof was in the pudding, were they out there? And, and I think the, the best evidence that this was a thing that was going on in our country is that it just wasn't that hard to find families who fit this profile. As we met uh, folks like uh, Ray McCormick in Cleveland and uh, Jennifer Hernandez in Chicago, we learned things about uh, the entrepreneurial spirit and how these families really haven't given up. Jessica Compton uh, is uh, the only cash income coming into her family is from donating plasma uh, twice, twice a week, as often as, uh, as uh, the law will allow. We're the only country in the world that allows people to donate plasma twice in one week because of health concerns, and she has a, a little divot in her arm from giving so often. Uh, but she's going to do exactly what it takes to um, care for, for her two daughters. And we learned about the importance of dignity and how much of social policy in the United States has acted to strip people of their dignity. And what we need to do is figure out ways to enhance it. Uh, and uh, so we just want to thank our beloved uh, agent, Lisa Adams. We want to thank our editor, Deanne Ermey, and the, and the Sydney Hillman Foundation uh, for this incredible honor. Uh, and also, uh, we just want to thank the, the families whose stories are told in $2 a day, who, who taught us and inspired us. Thank you.